Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The delightful children's book, When Crossing the Street, is inspired by the real-life childhood memories of author Kat Karamitros. A fun-filled read for little ones and grown-ups alike, this journey will keep you on your toes, providing endless possibilities for imaginative minds to keep creating. Kat is a 25-year-old United States Marine professional musician. When she's not wearing her uniform or performing in concerts and parades all over the country, Kat enjoys Spartan racing, rollerblading, cooking, and writing. She describes writing as her first love, a passion she maintains alongside service to her country. A native of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, currently residing in Port Royal, South Carolina, she'll never get too attached, she says, to one place, as home is wherever the Marine Corps takes her. Kat Karamitros, author of the beautifully illustrated, charming children's book, When Crossing the Street, recipient of the prestigious Plume Award for Literary Excellence, is our guest on This Week in America. Kat, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Well, excited to have you. This is such an interesting book that you've written. And let's talk about the background on this book. This really, give us a little history of the book. This really is personal for you, isn't it? This isn't just some random story. This really has meaning in your life. Yes, it absolutely does. So this book actually um, was written originally when I was 12 years old, was the original sort of poetic form. Um, when I was young, I had an uncle who I considered to be a, a third parent to me. He really helped raise me. And when we were young, we would cross the street often to go to the park near where I grew up. And he would always play a game with me. It started with, you know, what do we look for when we cross the street? And my obvious answer as a young child would, I would just say cars. And he was the one who would say, no, 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 that's boring. What else? What else? <laughs> and, you know, 20 minutes later, we would be at some outlandish list to include aliens and hot air balloons and, and you name it, it was on the list. Um, so, you know, when I got a little bit older, you know, I always remembered that game. It always meant a lot to me as a kid. So I had written that poem for him and it was on construction paper back in the early 2000s. I put two lines of each poem on the page. I self-illustrated it, which needless to say, the current illustrations are a little bit better <laughs> than the ones of 2009. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's how that book came together originally. And I ended up presenting that to him for, I believe it was Christmas one year. And, um, it's always been sort of a family uh, situation ever since then with that book. And then this year, I just finally decided to share it with the public when a friend of mine um, recently had a child of their own. And uh, we were just hanging out one night talking about children's books. And that sort of sparked the publishing process. Well, and it's an award-winning book, as I mentioned, When Crossing the Street. Kat Karamitros is the author. Karamitros is K-A-R-A-M-I-T-R-O-S. When Crossing the Street, I'll give you all the information, social media. She's very active on the book available at writersrepublic.com, the publisher. You'll find that in their bookstore there. And we'll give you that information as, as we go through the program Let's talk a little bit about the messages in the book. And this is interesting because everybody, the easy way out is you look for cars. You made it something that's, here you are years later, and you can, you can recall that you're talking about it almost like it happened with your uncle yesterday. That really was a great way to learn about crossing the street and all the different things to look for. And it's a message, obviously, that stayed with you all this time. Yes, absolutely. And, and that's one of the joys of, of having written the book is, you know, it's a great thing for kids to learn just because the list is so expansive on, a, on all the characters and what to look for. It's great to help kids learn what certain things are, whether it be animals or different types of vehicles. But it's also a great way to deliver that message in the early stages as they're starting to learn about crossing the street and just general safety in life as it comes along. The book is really family friendly. Talk about this. It's good for kids of all ages and parents of all ages, because let's face it, face it, as we get older, we sort of take crossing the street for granted. We really don't stop and often find ourselves or at least occasionally find ourselves going, boy, that car came close and I didn't even see it coming when I crossed the street. There's really a message there for everybody, isn't there? Absolutely. And it's, it's one of those where, you know, even you get to the back page, you close the book, you know, your list can, can go on. It doesn't have to end with the end of the book. And that's, that's what I love about uh, this, this story and how it unfolded with my uncle was, you know, every day there was something else to add to the list. So it was a great way for me to imagine and uh, keep being creative as a kid. So it's great for kids to do that now. Um, those that are learning to read, you know, the, the poem falls pretty easily on the tongue. So it's great for young learners to, you know, practice with. 
And it's a great search and find book as well for kids that maybe can't read yet, but love looking at pictures and, and pointing things out. You know, and the people have said, I love the book. I love the cadence. I love the way that she writes this because it helps my child as they learn to read, as they learn to write, as they learn to speak. Talk about that. It's one thing to, to be able to recollect these, the, the conversations, the instructions that you had, the questions you had with your uncle, but be able to write those in words that uh, will capture the attention, which you've done of, of children. How, what was the challenge in, in actually going back and writing it in, in such a beautiful way? So that one's actually a little foggy for me just because, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I actually wrote the original poem when I was 12 years old. And that's where that original, the cadence of the poem um, was actually written all the way back then. And when I went to publish the book, you know, this, this last year, all I really did was insert a couple more mature words, things that made the, the poem tie together a little bit easier. But the actual initial um, poem itself and to include the rhyme scheme and the cadence was all written when I was 12 years old. And I think it just kind of naturally came to me in the excitement of writing the poem as, as I got excited about giving this gift to my uncle. And uh, it just sort of came to me as, it, as I was writing it and it just stuck around the whole time. You know, and that's what makes it such a unique book and such a relatable book. This is not some 43-year-old writing sort of in the mind of a child, a 12-year-old crossing the street. This was obviously written as a child for a child, wasn't it? I mean, these are your memories. This is what you saw as a 12-year-old. Yes, absolutely. Um, And and it's really fun for me to tap into that and and just remember such a fond time of my life. And, um, you know, now to have this actual creation to really commemorate that time and, and to be able to share that with others as well. Our guest on the program is Kat Karamitros. That's K-A-R-A-M-I-T-R-O-S. Book available at uh, writersrepublic.com in the bookstore. Uh, the usual places. The book is called When Crossing the Street. We'll talk about social media that Kat's very active on and what you can do to, to be involved in that as we go through. Let's talk a little bit about what you plan on doing with the money raised for the book. You've got a special organization that you're behind and will fund with, with some of the proceeds. Talk about that. Sure, absolutely. So um, I would like to send uh, the majority of my royalties to the Hospital Hospitality House of Southwest Michigan. And that's a a house similar to the Ronald McDonald House, which a lot of people are pretty familiar with. Uh, But they're located in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And actually in 2010, um, my family unfortunately faced a tragedy where my brother suffered a fatal asthma attack. And while he was being kept in the ICU there in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Hospitality House put us up gave us a place to stay peaceful, quiet, with a lot of amenities and and helpful staff and everything for what we needed going through that time. And the organization is is sponsored completely by donations. It's a a charity that runs completely off of the kindness and and donations of others. And because it was such a a huge help during such a crucial time in my life and and my family's life, it's an organization that I gladly give back to as much as I can so that, you know, they can continue to bless and help other people They've had significant growth in the last couple of years. They've been able to actually open up more than one location now to be able to help multiple families. And so I just think that they're a great organization that doesn't necessarily get as much visibility as as they deserve. And uh, so I would just love to spread their message and make people aware of what they do and, you know, be able to send more donations their way so that they don't have to worry about that. Well, here's an opportunity to get a very entertaining book and enlightening book for your child. At the same time, be able to help uh, an organization that's doing remarkable work out there. That's the Hospital Hospitality House. And you see that's based in Kalamazoo if somebody's trying to to Google that and and maybe give some separate money. Yes, yes, it is. And their uh, their website is hhhkz.org. That's three H's, kz.org. It's the Hospital Hospitality House of Southwest Michigan and they're in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan specifically. You know, this is very interesting what you're doing, the message, uh, this this very personal message, uh, the time you shared with your uncle, that special time, and then turning around and doing something uh, very important like the work with the hospitality, Hospital Hospitality House. Uh, uh, again, all that information we'll have up on our website this week in America.us. Let's talk a little bit about this publishing experience for you. Uh, what's it been like, and and what would you say to others that are maybe have similar circumstances? They thought about you know writing a book. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know, don't know how much time it takes to do it. Well, what would you say to people out there to get them to like sit down and, and maybe do something they've been putting off for most of their lives? 
Sure. I, I think like most people, you know, we all kind of have a bucket list of things we've always wanted to do. And I think a lot of us get late in our lives and realize that we never did half of those things. And so for me, I know personally, it was sort of that I, I just took a step back one day and asked myself, um, you know, the question of I've always wanted to be a published author. Why aren't I? And when I realized that the answer was there was no good reason, that was when I sort of started buckling down and, and really pursuing publishing. And going through the process, you know, it was, it was kind of hard to get started. I didn't know where to start and everything. But, it, you know, I figured it out and I learned a lot. And now it's something I can say I've done. And it's an exciting time. So I would just encourage other people, not only, if, you know, specifically with writing and publishing, but anything that you feel like you want to do or pursue, ask yourself what's really holding you back from it. And if the answer is truly nothing, then, you know, stick, stick a toe in the water and, and get ready to dive in because it could be a great experience. So, you know, writing writing and publishing is still not my full-time job. It, it never has been, and it probably won't be for a long time, but that doesn't mean it's something you, uh, you have to put off or that you can't have in your life. What's well, interesting because so often we say, no, that takes so much time, and I'm busy, and I can't do that. I went through all that you're doing in your life, starting with the uh, with the Marine Corps and, all the, and a musician and all that you're doing. How time-consuming is it to be a writer? And I'm assuming you can sort of make it as time-consuming as you want to. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's something that, you know, you just have to make time for, like anything else that's important to you. You have to find the time to take care of it. But honestly, you know, as long as you, you have a plan and you're working with a company that, you know, knows your timeline and understands your goals, I think it's very uh, easy to pursue and, and something that, just giving yourself the right amount of time, the right amount of exposure, you know, it can come to fruition for everyone that wants to pursue it. How exciting is this time for you? Actually writing the book, you go back to it again, the beginning, you've got a 12 year old, you decide to write this for your uncle. It's done originally your illustrations on construction paper. And then you open a box and it's got your book in there. That's professionally published and award winning book. What was that like that moment when this, uh, this construction, uh, construction paper uh, tribute to your, your uncle turns into a book that people are enjoying and reading literally around the world? It, uh, it was kind of shocking. I, it didn't really <laughs> sink in at first. It was a little bit surreal. Um, I think when it really started to hit me was when I had put out an advertisement on my personal Facebook page for anyone wanting a signed copy. And I started getting orders after orders for people wanting signed copies, mostly for their children or their grandchildren. And it started to get a little bit more real then. But when it was really real was when they started sending the photos back of their children, enjoying the book and reading it in their bed and and having a good time. I think that was when it really hit me that this was a product that um, was really going out to people, real life families, real life children that were just having a good time enjoying something that I had created. Um, and so as that started to sink in, it, it just became a blessing and, and something I really enjoyed watching uh, blossom ever since then. And it's interesting because you're active. You mentioned on Facebook, you like people to interact. And it sounds like you're still excited when you see a new child that's getting the book and sharing the book with the family. How can people follow you on Facebook? And you really like it to be interactive. How can they interact with you? Sure. Yeah. So I, I have a business page on Facebook. It's Kat Karamitros. It's the, uh, the same name as my, my author name. Um, if you just type that into Facebook, you'll be able to find it. And I love it. Um, you know, like I said, when people send photos or anything like that, that they're willing to be shared on that page, I love to be able to share those, comment with the users, see how people are enjoying the book, um, you know, see what their personal reviews are and just sharing their stories. I don't have any children of my own, so that's kind of a vicarious way for me to, you know, see everybody enjoying a product that I've created. I also have an Instagram page. It's the uh, same thing, cat.karenitros for the Instagram profile. And it's, it's basically the same content that's uh, posted on my Facebook page as well. It's interesting. You can f get information. You can follow Kat, get all the information on the book. You've done such an excellent job with this story. Yeah. What are you working on now? I, I, I mentioned all, everything going on in your life. Do you have thoughts for a second <laughs> book? Um, I have, I have uh, thought about a second book. I actually, there's another family book that I wrote when I was about the same age for another uncle of mine who was a chronic, he, he always lost his keys. And so that book was called A Book for Uncles Who Can't Keep Keys. And uh, that, that may be coming to published fruition here in the future. We'll have to see if that actually ends up making it. Um, but I, I would love to continue pursuing the children's literature um, route. I think it's really exciting. I think there's a lot there. And, you know, now that I've put my toe in, like I mentioned before, I'm ready to dive in. So um, I'm definitely looking forward to what the future holds and balancing it with my current career and and just seeing how it all unfolds. 
Well, it's interesting. Losing keys. I can't wait to read that book. I learned from when crossing the street to be a little more careful as I'm cross crossing the street. You read the book as an adult, you're going to be looking for aliens around that truck that you see coming at you. So that'll change your approach to, to crossing the street. Losing keys is something else that would be very instrumental, probably amusing to the children, serious for us adults who are lose the keys. So I can't wait to, uh, to see that. And again, uh, the, the money that you receive donated to charity, the hospital hospitality house. And I want to give that website, if you would, again, uh, another time. It's a very important uh, mission that they're on. And uh, if people would like to, to help them, and it meant so much to you and to your family, what's the website again for the uh, hospital hospitality house? Sure. It's hhhkz.org. It's three H's, kz.org. And that's for the hospitality house of Southwest Michigan located in Kalamazoo. And all this information, of course, uh, on the website, thisweekinamerica.us. Our guest on the program, Kat Karamitros, K-A-R-A-M-I-T-R-O-S. The book available, uh, writersrepublic.com, and the bookstore, the usual places. Again, you'll find all that information on our website. Kat available on, uh, on social media there as well, where you can interact with her. How are things going? First of all, uh, you know, thank you for your service in the Marine Corps. I mentioned that you're, you know, you'll go where they tell you to go. How's it going? You, that's got to be a busy life with you with the Marine Corps and everything else you've got going. It is. It is definitely a busy life, but it's an exciting life. And I've always been a fast paced person. So it definitely caters to my personality really well. And I'm just looking forward to uh, where I might end up next. I've got a little bit time left uh, here in South Carolina. And then um, up after that, it's up to the Marine Corps and, and who knows where life will bring me. You know, and I, I get the impression you're looking for a new adventure. So when it comes wherever it is, Kat's going to make the best out of, out of it and to enjoy her time there. Absolutely. Well, this has been so much fun having you on the program. Kat Karamitros is our guest, if you're spelling that, K, uh, K-A-T, and then K-A-R-A-M-I-T-R-O-S, the book, When Crossing the Street. Just remember that, the award-winning book, writersrepublic.com, and the bookstore, the usual places as well. Follow Kat, uh, uh, author of When Crossing the Street and the, the various social media outlets. Kat, a pleasure having you on the program. Uh, congratulations on the success of When Crossing the Street. Looking forward to uh, when older people lose their keys or whatever the title is going to be coming up next. Thank you for being with us on the program. It's been fun. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It is our pleasure. Kat Karamitros, the author of When Crossing the Street, information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.